Hey guys, today we are going to do section 4.3, matrices, solving systems by matrices. So, when you are identifying what a matrix is, a matrix is right over here, this is matrix A, and it is just a way for you to organize numbers, values, in a row and column formation inside of those brackets. So most matrices are identified by a capital letter and it's used italicized. So matrix A would be this matrix here. The size of a matrix is very important for when you do operations with matrices. So the size of the matrix right here, you talk about it in terms of the number of rows. Think if you're on the crew team, when you row, you row across. So in this case, we have this row here and this row here. So rows, we have two rows for A, so we would say two for the size. And then columns, columns hold up buildings. So we have one, two, three columns. So in this case, our matrix A, the size of it would be a two by three. So write that down so you have it. This is just an example of a matrix there. Matrices could be any size but we, um, from the packet and also just when we get into this here, size matters depending on the operation. So for addition and subtraction, in order for you to add or subtract matrices, they have to have the same number of columns and the same number of rows. So they need to be the exact same size in order to add or subtract. If you don't, if they don't have the same, then you would just write cannot be done. So, when we talk about the location of a number in a matrix, we say what row and column it's in. So this one here is in row one, column one, and this element here is row one, column one. So when we add our two matrices together, we are gonna add these two numbers together. So three plus a negative one is two, and that is it for that location. For the bottom right one, six, that is row two, goes top to bottom, row two, column two, one, two. So this one here has the same location as four. So six plus four is 10. Keep going with this here, fill in the next two. I'm going out of order for a reason, just because I wanted to show you those two. So five, row one, column one, row one, column one is a zero. So five plus zero is zero. and negative four plus five, one. So the sum of those two matrices would be this new two by two matrix and has the elements two, five, one, ten. You just read across up and down as if you're just reading something. All right, so that is for addition and subtraction. They have to have the same size in order for you to add or subtract. All right, the identity matrix. Take a minute, pause, and write this down here. It is a matrix that you can multiply any matrix by and get back that original matrix. Think in terms of normal integers or numbers. You can multiply any number by what and get back the original number. So what can I multiply seven by in order for me to get the answer seven back? If you said one, you are correct. So the number one is called the multiplicative identity in integers and in numbers and rational numbers. Here, the identity matrix looks like this. They look pretty funky, but that's what they would look like. This is a two by two, they're always square, so two by two, and this one is a three by three. The number ones are in the diagonal and everything else is just the number zero. All right, so let's get into how we can have matrices solve our system of equations here. So in order for us to know, this mess it up, yes it will. All right, let's do it this way. All right, in order for us to know when two matrices are inverses, because we're gonna need an inverse in order for us to cancel stuff, in order for us to solve system of equations. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> so in order for us to know if two matrices are inverses, what we do is we multiply them and see if their product is 
like the identity matrix above, so 1, 0, 0, 1 up here. So we're going to do this right now. So here is matrix A, here is matrix B. We're going to see if they are inverses by multiplying them. All right, here I have my calculator, the button next to number 9. Click on your 2 by 2. 5, 1, 4, 1, the first matrix. We are multiplying by the second matrix here. 1, negative 1, negative 4, 5. And hit enter. Our answer, 1, 0, 0, 1. That is the identity, so yes, they are inverses. Good. All right, so not all matrices have inverses. If a matrix has an inverse, it's called invertible. So write that down, hit pause, write that down. All right, a couple of definitions here. And I kind of went a little out of order. All right, so an inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's first do the determinant. So write down this right here for a 2 by 2 matrix, and then we'll talk about it. Hit pause if you need to. The locations there, A, B, C, D, lowercase. That's just the locations. So I'm going to go a little out of order, and I want you to do the same. Write this down, A, D, minus B, C is called the determinant of A. That, de that determines, that um, tells you whether a matrix has to be a square matrix, so the number of rows and number of columns have to be equal. The determinant will determine whether the matrix has an inverse. So if we were to go back up to the top here, 5, 1, 4, 1. So back over here, 5, 1, 4, 1. The determinant which is labeled DET of A, or it looks like absolute value, so put those two things down, is AD minus BC. So AD, so 5 times 1 minus 1 times 4. So 5 minus 4, in this case our determinant is 1. The determinant will always be a number. All right, so I'm going to let you use your calculator to find the inverse and the determinant, but you still need to be able to know how you find them. So for an inverse, the inverse is 1 divided by the determinant. So if the determinant is 0, then there is no inverse. And if you notice here, inside of this matrix, the A and D switch spots, and B and C get multiplied by a negative 1. So hit pause and write down how you would find the inverse of your matrix here. If you want to take a minute, what you can do is to find the inverse, notice it's this little negative one. On your calculator, let's go back up for a minute. Where is it? Here's our calculator. I'm gonna go back up, hit enter, delete the second matrix, and I'm gonna raise our first matrix that one we're talking about, to a negative 1 power, and that gives me the matrix 1, negative 1, negative 4, and 5, which is the second matrix there, and that's how we knew that they were inverses, because we multiplied them and got the identity. I know this is a lot of information being told to you right now in this video. All right, so mathematically, that is how you find an inverse of a matrix and the determinant of a matrix. So remember, the symbol for inverse is this negative 1 in the exponent here, and the determinant, the symbol is DET, or absolute value bars around your matrix. All right, so how does, <clears throat> how does this connect to solving systems of equations? Let's go back and refresh. A system of equations is two or more equations. We're focusing on two equations and two unknowns, x, y. So here's our system. Rewriting it in a matrix equation, our matrix will be the four coefficients, 3, negative 4, 2, 7, written just like that. The variable matrix, you write your variables from left to right going up and down, so 2 by 1 here, equals your answer matrix. So this one here, to identify them, this is your coefficient matrix. 
And this is your constant matrix. <clears throat> written right below there. All right, so your coefficient matrix. Just for the sake of understanding here, when you multiply matrices, you multiply across and up and down, so it would be 3 times x time, uh, plus negative 4 times y, so that's how you get the 3x minus 4y. Your calculator does it for you, just showing you how it is done. For the sake of understanding, we're just going to talk about the coefficient matrix being A, and your constant matrix being B. So if you were thinking of an algebra problem way back when, if you had 5x equals negative 105, what operation would you need to do in order to solve this equation for x? Well, first you have to look and say, all right, what operation is going on between 5 and x? And that's multiplication. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So we would have to do the inverse. We would have to divide both sides by 5, and we would say x equals negative 21 is our answer. And this is just a lo lovely thought bubble off to the side here, what we're talking about. So in matrices, there is no such thing as matrix division. That's why there is that new concept of an inverse matrix because it allows for you to multiply the inverse of a matrix with itself to get the identity, which equals 1, and that's what we want. So our goal of solving a system is to find the values of x and y that make both equations true. So we're looking for the intersection point of our two lines on our graph, and that, both, that existence of that point is the solution to your system. So if we have this in yellow here, our matrix equation, we, we just replaced what this matrix was with the letter A, constant matrix with the letter B. In order to solve for the answer, we want to know what X and Y are. So we're solving for our variable matrix. In order to do that, we need to get rid of A, just like we needed to get rid of 5 over here. In order to do that, we need to multiply A by its inverse function. So the inverse of A is A inverse. We are going to have to multiply whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. So we're going to multiply both sides by A inverse. And I have it written right down here. So all of that goes to tell you that when you are solving a system of equations using an inverse, what you have to do, all you have to do, is in your calculator plug in a inverse, so you will write your coefficient matrix to the inverse, negative 1, times your constant matrix. And that's all you need to do, and the answer will be in a, in a 2 by 1, an x comma y, so just like this, you'll, your answer is going to look something like this, with 2 here, and that will be your x and y solution to your system. So let's go up here and solve this system using matrices. All right, so in my calculator right now, where the heck did I just put that? Let's see if this will let me do this. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So here, over here on the... Escape. All right. All right, so I took the coefficient matrix and put that in a matrix on my calculator. I raise it to the negative 1. And we are multiplying it by the constant matrix, negative 11 and 41. So it's the coefficient matrix raised to the negative 1, because we want to do the inverse of the coefficient times the constant matrix. Hit enter, and your answer is 3, 5. And that means x, y equals 3, 5. So this will be x, y equals 3, 5. Well, guess what? Your solution to your system is the point 3, 5. How awesome is that? So straightforward and easy to solve using matrices. So once again, coefficient matrix raised to the negative 1 times the answer matrix gives you your, sorry, times the constant matrix gives you your answer. All right, for the sake of time, hit pause, and I'd like you to try this one using matrices, and we will go over this tomorrow. 
Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks, guys.